I needed to be sure that this girl was truly the one. There was an awful lot riding on it. I, I had started seeing her a few months ago, and well, I was truly smitten. The girl seemed absolutely amazing in every respect. Uh, she was wonderful, and the two of us, when we were together, we just clicked. Our, our values, our interests, our, our passions, our priorities, and objectively speaking, well, everybody, everybody who knew the girl assured me that she was plain awesome, a genuine catch. But in spite of all of that, I worried. In fact, I actually worried quite a lot. You see, I had been down this road before, 10 years earlier, and things hadn't worked out very well that time. Now, I was in my early 30s, recently divorced, and the father of two very young sons. So I needed to be absolutely sure that this girl truly was the one. All of those worries came blurting out of me one day on a telephone conversation I was having with my father. I still remember that phone call. I, I, I'd called my dad officially to get some help with how to remove a stuck lawnmower blade. But the conversation had sort of drifted, or well, possibly I had steered it, towards the subject of the particular girl. Dad, I said, Dad, I think she's the one. I know she's the one. But what if I'm wrong again? How can I be really sure? Well, my father was silent on the other end of the phone for what seemed like a very long time. Finally, he spoke. Jeff, he said, I don't think I can help you with really for sure. But if you want a suggestion, here's mine. Why not take her on a canoe trip? Well, Dad, I protested, you know I haven't set foot in a canoe in well over 10 years. I know, my dad said. And I'm the first to admit, canoe tripping is not everybody's cup of tea, but Jeff, there was a time when you lived for it. You might want to feel right now how the young lady in question feels about canoes. And for my money, the two of you, you'll learn more together during a week in the woods than you would through another six months courtship in the city. Take her on a canoe trip, Jeff. You'll find out pretty quickly what makes her tick, and, well, the poor thing is going to learn a few interesting things about you, too. <laughs> and then both of you will know. And so, I phoned the girl. Would you like to go on a canoe trip? And she said, yes. Well, actually, what she really said is, awesome, I've never done anything like that before. It sounds like fun. When do we leave? <laughs> Some of you know the girl. Well, I carpe diemed. Well, I, I, next week, if you're free, she was. Leaving me one week to plan the trip to figure out the girl. Out there in the woods, I decided. That's where I'll figure out what really makes her tick. And then, of course, I went to work in the absolutely most important element of any canoe trip. The food, of course. <laughs> now, back in those days, I took my food and drink pretty seriously. And my mother, a lifelong foodie and canoe tripper herself, had raised me on the strict doctrine that the success or the failure of any canoe trip is contingent exclusively on the food. My mother was convinced that it could pour rain for seven days straight, the mosquitoes prove an unremitting hell, and every portage trail turn into an unrelenting bog. But if the food was plentiful and delicious, all parties would declare the trip a resounding success. <laughs> so, in the week leading up to the big trip, I fired off an endless series of food-related emails to that particular girl. How does item X sound to you? I asked. Sounds pretty tasty, she replied. <laughs> and how about... Why? <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> and what about Zed? I asked, upping the culinary ante more than a few notches.
I'll try anything once. <laughs> the girl's a foodie, I decided. And I went to work on packing. Well, seven days later, the big day arrived. I, I picked her up in the morning. Five and a half hours later north, we were at the water's edge, car parked, loading our canoe. I, I, I can hardly wait for dinner, she announced. Uh, Jeff, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Uh, just kidding about the horse. But Jeff, you've been talking about nothing but food for a week, so, so what are we having tonight anyway? Well, your choice. I affected an air of... I dine this well every evening in my life. <laughs> if you prefer, I could fire up the brandied chicken breast with the shiitake mushroom reduction. <laughs> and in that case, I'd suggest we opt for the pinot. On the other hand, if you'd prefer, we could go with the penne and the prosciutto and parmesan, and, and then we'd like to be safer to go cabernet. <laughs> but you decide. The food is all organized by meal and day and color-coded in the yellow food barrel. Take a look. Decide what you'd like. Ah, uh, what yellow food barrel? <laughs> and my universe collapsed. <sighs> I, I checked the bow, I checked the stern, I even walked back to the parking lot and checked that trunk of the car, but even as I was looking, I knew all along precisely where that yellow food barrel was. At home, six and a half hours south, standing beside my basement fridge. Uh, y you see, when you're packing food for a canoe trip, there's some ingredients that you don't want to like, wait until the last minute to put into the barrel. The last thing in the world you want is for the, for the gorgonzola to get overly runny on the drive north. Well, she saw my crestfallen face. Uh, what is it, she said. Well, the trip's ruined, I announced. I, I, I left the food at home. We have nothing to eat. I sighed, walked down to the lake shore, sat on a rock, stared blankly off onto some distant horizon, thoroughly and utterly defeated. She paused for a moment, thinking, considering, then went over and sat down beside me. But didn't we just pass a, a, a little grocery store? Uh, only about 20 minutes ago, right before the turnoff, we could get food for the trip there. <laughs> that was a food land. <laughs> they don't even carry the basic President's Choice products. <laughs> It'll be fine, she said. Come on, let's go get some groceries. And so I, under protest, allowed the girl to drive us to the food land. <laughs> and then I stood and watched in mute culinary horror. <laughs> well, she did the groceries. Hamburger helper. Alphagetti, cheese whiz, and blasphemy of blasphemies, instant coffee. I know. But half an hour later, we were back in the water and on our way down the lake with a menu of sorts. On day two, I decided that I would teach that girl how to fish. Somehow she'd never been fishing before. Well, after 45 minutes and not a single nibble from a fish, I decided to risk everything to impress her. I reached into my tackle box and pulled out a particular lure. This, I said, this is my lucky never fail lure. I got it from my father. He got it from his father. He gave it to me on my 15th birthday. This lure, this lure never misses. I snagged it on my first cast <laughs> on something deep and dark in the lake. Well, for 15 minutes, I fought and struggled with that lure, losing every possible de-snagging trick that I knew. But 
it was hopeless, it was a lost cause. So finally, after 15 minutes, I reached reluctantly for my knife and was preparing to cut the family heirloom loose when, when she stopped me. Hey, she said, what are you doing? You have barely even tried. <laughs> and those were her parting words before she clambered up onto the bow seat of the canoe and leapt out into the lake and started to swim. 10 minutes later, she was back, treading water beside the canoe holding up the lucky never fail lure. <laughs> you might want to give this to your kids someday, she said. <laughs> On day three, the weather turned ugly. Bitterly cold, soaking wet. We pitched our tent that night in a driving rain. She was just preparing to enter the tent when I stopped her. Uh, uh, basic canoe trip rule, I explained. Uh, take off all of your soaking wet clothes in the tent's vestibule, then use the chamois to dry yourself, and once you're bone dry, then into the tent, put on new things inside the tent. She looked a little awkward and embarrassed. Uh, I was so cold this morning that I kind of, I kind of put on all of my clothes. <laughs> I don't have anything warm or dry left in the tent. That's a rookie error, isn't it? And then it was my turn to play the hero. Got you covered, I said. I'll meet you in the tent. And when she arrived in the tent, I grabbed from my emergency dry bag and with a flourish pulled out thermal underwear, a down-filled vest, hat, and mittens, hoping I got her size right and everything back in the city. <laughs> On some trips, I explained, the emergency clothes bag never even gets touched. But it's nice to have her nights like this. But those clothes you're putting on now, they need to stay dry in the tent. Well, we sat up for a while, cuddling under our sleeping bag, listening to the thunderstorm raging outside. A an amazing experience, if you trust your tent. <laughs> and then gradually we drifted off into sleep. But I woke with a start 45 minutes later. What is it, she said. The, the food pack, I said. I, I forgot to hoist the food pack. She looked kind of confused. What do you mean, hoist the food pack? I, I explained. I said, you know, I left the barrel back in the city. So every night I've been taking our food, putting it into a pack, tying a rope to that pack, and then hoisting that pack up over the branches of a tree so bears or raccoons don't get at it. I forgot to do it tonight. I better go out now if we have any food left. Stupid of me. Hey, she said. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're only nearly perfect. And those were her final words before she headed into the tent's vestibule and called back to me. I'll look after the food pack tonight. You stay warm and dry in the tent. And then she was gone, out there into the raging storm. And me, well, I was left all alone in the tent. And part of me was pretty happy about that. <laughs> the toasty, warm part. But another part of me felt sort of a little, I don't know, what's the word? Guilty? Thinking of her out there in the raging thunderstorm all on her own, trying to get that pack up over the tree. Now, I wasn't feeling quite guilty enough to actually leave the tent. <laughs> but I thought, I will just poke my head out and see how she's coming along with the job. So I poked just my head out into the dark. It took me a while to find her. It truly was a dark and stormy night. But then I saw her. A lone silhouette, standing under the sweeping branches of high white pine. The girl was soaked and shivering, her, her long brown hair wild and whipped by the wind. And the girl was stark naked. <laughs> she was already well underway with her task, too. She, she had managed to find a length of rope and a grapefruit-sized stone. Now, as I watched from the tent, she was taking that rope and tying it to the stone, then attempting to lob that stone tied to rope up and over the sweeping branches of a white pine. And every time that she missed with her throw, which was every time, <laughs> well, the rock came crashing down, bounced out of the rope she had tied, and she had to start the whole process all over again. Now, to her credit, there was absolutely nothing wrong with that girl's throwing arm. The rope lobbed over branch of tree 
well, tied to rock, isn't nearly as easy as it looks. How many of you would agree with me who have done this? Right. And for the rest of you, try it sometime, and if you get it the first time, wait till a dark and stormy night, strip naked, and try it again. <laughs> then we will talk. But the thing that was so amazing about the girl is that every time that the rock rolled away, she simply walked over and repeated the process again. There was no quit in this girl. And of course, as I watched, that's when my guilt ganged up on my toasty warm part. <laughs> Damn it, I thought, I gotta go help. And a minute after that, I was out there under the broad branches of the white pine, soaked and shivering and equally buck naked. <laughs> Would you like a hand with the throwing, I asked. Are you kidding, she said. I'm doing this myself if it takes me all night. <laughs> what, what are you doing out here anyway? I'm fine. Well, for one thing, I didn't want to miss the show. <laughs> but the truth is, I'm actually concerned about the instant coffee. <laughs> well, a few throws later, she nailed it. The rock went up and over the sweeping branch of the tree, came down the other side. Then we tied the pack to the rope, and together we levered that food pack high up into the night sky. And two minutes later, we were toasty warm and cuddled up back in our tent, ready for sleep. She rolled over and whispered right before she drifted off, you know, I think I could get used to this canoe tripping thing. But on our next trip, Jeff, and on the ones after that, maybe, let's bring the food barrel with us, okay? <laughs> well, I woke early the next morning, and as she slept, I tiptoed out of the tent, and I went to work. And when that girl woke up, I presented her with breakfast in bed, hot brown sugar and cinnamon bannock with just a grate of fresh lemon on top. You, I announced, are my hero. But I'm sorry, heroes only get instant coffee on this trip. <laughs> and our day proceeded wonderfully until dinner time. But by the time we got to dinner, we were running pretty short on the Foodland grocery supply. I didn't have a lot left to work with. Uh, I, I took a look in the food bag. I, I had a package of hamburger helper, a pouch of old El Paso taco sauce, a half head of wilted cabbage, and some dubious looking granules, which I'd been avoiding all week. Texturized soya protein meat substitute. <laughs> That's what it claimed on the label. <laughs> well, it's going to have to stand in for ground beef, I decided, and I went to work on cobbling together some primitive form of a chili. The end result was truly nasty. <laughs> but she said it was yummy. But both of us, motivated either by, well, genuine pleasure or genuine hunger, wolfed down to massive bowls of the stuff each. Yep. And two hours later, the crisis arrived. We were in the tent, sitting opposite each other, playing gin rummy, when I was suddenly overcome by a powerful urge to fart. It turns out that a half head of cabbage and a whole package of texturized soya protein will do that to a system. But I was grimly determined to hold that fart in. For those of you who don't know yet, farting isn't supposed to happen until after you're married. We were still in the courtship stage of this relationship. But as I sat there in my edge of the tent suffering, she suddenly leaned back in her end of the tent, hitched up her knees, shouted out, service! And unleashed a shockingly loud and long fart. Well, 
I, 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 I sat there speechless. And she sat there looking at me as if there was something that, well, I was clearly forgetting to do. I kept staring at her blankly. Well, she said, are you going to return my serve or not? Tell me you've never played fart tennis before. <laughs> the rules are simple, she said. Once I serve, you have precisely two minutes to volley. And if you can't, I win the point. Isn't the gas from the stuff we had tonight just killing you? And so, gratefully, I hitched up my knees and I volleyed. I don't mind telling you folks that it was a closely contested match. <laughs> we, we broke a lot of wind, but neither of us seemed able to break set. When it got too dark to see the cards, we briefly considered lighting a candle lantern. <laughs> but thought better of it. Yeah, an open flame would have blown that tent of ours sky high. Well, two or three days after that, we returned to the big city. And the very first thing I did when I got back into town, I called my dad, thanking him for his excellent advice. And a few weeks after that, I decided that I would marry that girl. Aww. Or when she's the one telling the story, she decided she'd marry me. <laughs> but either way, she truly was, and still is, the one. Aww. Her name is Jennifer, and we still spend our summers. I know, I want to stop there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, get points for weeks with a line like that. <laughs> her name is Jennifer. And we still spend our summer days paddling canoes, diving for lost fishing lures, hoisting bear packs in the nude, just for memory's sake. And <laughs> yes, once in a while when the spirit moves us, we engage in a vigorous and competitive round of fart tennis. 